You know, we're actually doing quite well. When this whole thing hit, um, my wife thought it was a good idea that I work out of the office. So I've been able to go to the office every day. I don't see anybody, nobody comes here, but I've been able to work out of the office all day. And that was good for their sanity because I'm usually up talking to people very early in the morning all over the country to you know, help them out. So, so far it's been pretty good. Um, I, I will find, I'll say this, I am very, very grateful for the fact that I was actually able to go out and play around at golf with a friend. Uh, just to be able to have that interaction with somebody other than the family was just wonderful. So, so far we're doing pretty good. Well, you know what? Um, most of my clients have not, you know, I mean, everybody gets anxious about all the things that they see in the news, but most of my clients are not having issues with that. There's a few I've had to explain things, but they already know what's going to happen if certain things occur. And they already know what we're going to do. And we've been very communicative with them. So they don't really have that issue. For those people who are, you know, thinking, hey, I'm going to retire in a year or two. Uh, it's one of those things where you say, okay, what happens if you lose your job now because the company is looking to cut the top salaries because they're looking to have the cash flow to stay afloat until this thing is over? And if that's the case, you know what? How will you be able to handle your expenses? That means everything from buying a new car to remodeling a house, handling health care, things of that nature. And how will your portfolio or your investments need to change from a risk standpoint to make sure you don't put your income at risk. So those are the type of things and those questions that we're dealing with when, you know, people are looking, can I retire now or do I have to wait a couple of years? That type of Well, it, it is a little bit of a mystery. But, you know, it's not, um, I'm not going to say it's not too hard uh, to read the economic tea leaves. So, for example... Companies like Boeing, who just recently announced 12,000 people to be laid off because the airline industry is struggling and won't likely be needing the same amount of planes as before. Um, and we're in addition to that, we're seeing, even seeing this in the news industry where you see CBS today out in Los Angeles has recently laid off some of their major anchors that they're paying large salaries to to reduce the cost because the business that owns them is Viacom and they're determining, hey, our other businesses aren't doing as well because people aren't just spending. Um, so there will be a new normal, uh, especially when it comes to restaurants, theaters. Uh, we talked to some of the, the NFL we heard last night on the news where they're saying, hey, yeah, you can have the games, but the stadiums can only be 25% full. So that means they're not going to be able to sell the tickets. So how are they going to create their revenue? Um, you know, we're seeing all those type of things in that, that uh, economic employment impact I, I still think is going to be the, the mixed bag of tricks that nobody knows what's really going to occur here over the next six months. Well, there's, that's right. There's a few issues there. One is we have people who are concerned about where their next dollar is going to come from, if they're going to get laid off. Um, and they're, uh, some are also still very anxious about COVID-19. It's do they have the comfort level to go out and spend like they did before? Uh, do they have the comfort level of going into an establishment like that? 
Uh, and um, that's gonna take a little bit for people to become comfortable with, uh, unless there's some sort of vaccine that just comes out and says, hey, everybody's cured, just take the vaccine and we're good. But I don't think that's gonna occur in the short period of time. You're very, you're very, you know what, um, just like in 2008, um, we have seen a number of things occur with financial fraud, especially when you have anxieties up, people aren't thinking straight, they're going, oh my gosh, this person can help me, and they're actually looking to hurt them. Um, we saw people that have been uh, representing themselves as the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and offering investments that are supposed to be safe in the stock market. And the reality is the FDIC only deals with banks. They're the interface between the federal government and banks. So they would never be calling anybody. So we obviously know that's a fraud. In addition to that, there was companies that are calling around to businesses saying, hey, I just need to validate some of your information so we can get you to the front of the list on the PPP loans. And that doesn't occur because the Small Business Administration doesn't call out like that. And then you hear the same old things with Social Security. Uh, people are getting IRS calls. Um, uh, things of that nature. In fact, there are scammers that are, you know, for those people who are filing for unemployment and haven't quite received their debit card yet, so they can use some of those unemployment funds. Um, there are people trying to scam them out of that. So you really have to watch that. And on top of that, we, with the stimulus checks, um, you know, what you read the, you can go in online. Well, there's a couple of things that we want to do, um, and I'm dealing with people in that same situation right now where companies have laid them off and these people are at the director level, so they're making a lot of money and all of a sudden they get a severance and it's done. Um, and they're looking at how do I retire, what do I need to do, all uh, those type of things. First thing we take a look at is things like Social Security. There's a lot of things to need to consider, just not longevity with Social Security, when the best time to take it. The impact on taxes, how much can your spouse receive? Um, if you want to, if you need to continue to work, how much can you make and still receive it without losing portions of it? So that's one piece. Are you going to receive a pension? How is that going to work? Uh, your retirement assets. You know, it used to be probably far riskier if you were looking to retire in five or more years, but now you're looking to retire now. How do you structure those investments so that you don't take on as much risk, but still get a reasonable rate of return in order to provide yourself an income that you can't outlive while, you know, you can't outlive. So those are the factors that people need to take a look at. And the reality is I'm, I'm not saying anything new because that's the same thing people should have done before. You just want to take care of it in this environment. From, from my perspective, you wouldn't want to do anything um, other than what you normally do. And what I mean by that is when you set up a retirement plan, um, most people that work, they're usually paying their bills. They're not, uh, they're just paying their bills and living their life. They're really not getting into the detail of exactly how much they're spending. Um, 
if they have a good idea of exactly how much they're spending before they retire and what they expect to spend when they're retired, and then apply things like that to income, um, pensions, um, and how much money they need to derive from the investments they have. Uh, once they do that, they can determine, hey, look, I need a five or 6% rate of return in order to make my life work. If somebody needs a uh, higher than a 6% rate of return, you really wanna look at, okay, how much more money do I need to put away until I get to a position where I can comfortably retire? Because the reality is there is going to be another downturn. And if you have a million dollar portfolio and it goes down by 30% and you're taking out oh, five or 6% a year, that turns into 10 or 12% withdrawal. And it's not likely you're gonna get back to the point where you have a million dollars. So you wanna stress test that I want to say income plan, that retirement plan, it can what we call life corrections, somebody passing away, health corrections, somebody having health issues, market corrections. Um, and if you're in a situation like an airlines, like we saw way back 20, 30 years ago, when, you know, like when Delta uh, went into bankruptcy, people had pensions that were paying five, $6,000 a month. And in fact, they went bankrupt three times and the pension got sold three times. And you know, if they're still with those pensions, they're probably getting $1,200 a month now. So it's important to look at those things to make sure you're not in a position later in life where, you know what, hey, the doctor says you're going to live five more years, but you might not have five more years worth of money, if that makes sense. Well, you know what, the, the reality is the market is fear and greed driven. So when things go well, like they hear about, um, hey, we think we have two companies here that might have a vaccine, the market's going to move forward because people see that hope and they will put money into the market. My understanding today, uh, the market was uh, down a little bit, but basically they were waiting for the Donald Trump's uh, comments on his communications with China. Because the reality is China and the US are on a kind of a collision course. And I mean, they had some really great things going on with the trade. They were gonna do it, get some release. So they're gonna, uh, what are the, um, they were gonna reduce some of the sanctions on China. But if you look at the way they've interacted over the last couple of months, it's, it's more, more been divergent then you know working together as two big superpowers to resolve a problem so my hope is that they uh, have some positive results which means the market would likely move forward well i'll tell you what um here's the thing um, in September of 2019, the national debt was just over $22.7 trillion. Um, because of the money that's being utilized to supplement our economy uh, and all the bailouts, we're almost at $25 trillion, okay? Um, we have the Trump tax cuts, which are gonna sunset in 2026. It really means that um, some people, I'll just put it this way, rhetorically, if you think taxes are gonna go down, do you think they'll stay the same or do you think they're gonna go up? If you think they're gonna go up, you need to start preparing your investments or your retirement plan for, hey, what if taxes go from a 12% back it to a 20 or 20 to a 35? Because you wanna make sure you have that put in place because it's likely that taxes will uh, move forward. Cause you know what, that's just a lot of debt. Uh, out here in California, they're short, $54 billion this year uh, because of just because of the COVID-19 impact and it's likely more. They've got pension issues. So they're gonna look at probably ways to either reduce their, their expenses or increase taxes. And most of the politicians I know or have seen, they like to increase taxes. Okay, so they can go to the website um, and just go to um, uh, sextonadvicegroup.com. If they'd like to email us, just info, I-N-F-O at Sexton Advisory Group. 
or then just give us a ring at 1-800-560-2611. Um, we like to, uh, we have a lot of people calling during this period of time and we just call them 15 minute discovery calls. And a lot of times it's just answering people's questions, um, helping them get a little bit of clarity, reducing some anxiety. Uh, the biggest thing is you don't wanna panic during this period of time. You wanna make good solid decisions, making sure you have all the information so you make prudent informed ones. Thanks, Andy. I love your I love your show.